What's going on, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down, hanging out with Wyatt Russell, Lodge 49 on AMC. What's up, man? How's it going? Good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. We were just trading war stories about uh, our weddings coming up. So yes. it's, it's, it's that time in our lives. So yeah. Lots going on. Yeah, a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> but this is awesome. I'm really happy that you got this show going on. And, Thanks, and I'm man. wondering because like it's a very interesting time in TV. Yeah. And this show has cut through, and it's different from other stuff that's out there. So yeah. what's it been like placing this show in this TV landscape? Um, it's been it's been interesting. Uh, it, it, it's a really difficult show to categorize when you're when when everything in TV now is categorized seemingly in s sort of s small categories mm -hmm. where it's like it's an action adventure. It's uh, you super know, niche, right? su yeah, <laughs> super niche. Everything is like you know, Game of Thrones is like a sci-fi fantasy. Right. There's a lot of sci-fi fantasy yeah. stuff, and this is an existential storytelling. A de de the way we tell a story is with the device we tell right. it with is, is through existential storytelling, which is a very difficult thing to do on screen. And this season, I feel like the viewers that have seen the show, that enjoyed, that enjoyed the first season and that kind of got the vibe of the show, really will understand the journey that we're mm -hmm. on when, when you start watching season two. Because it, it it doubles down on that, and I think it it, it improves on it in, in a lot of ways. Um, but it's 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 I think it's awesome because you can't point to another show and say, oh, it's sort of like this show. Yeah. Like it's I knew that when I read it when I, when I very 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 first read it, I knew that this if anything, it's going to be the most different show on TV. And I think we achieved that, yeah. um, and so that that's I'm I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be a part of that. Well, I'm sure the pitch process was interesting because, like, if you're pitching this to Suits, like, it, it's not exactly like a yeah. very easy thing to put in a box. And even for you, I'm sure you had to read the script to really understand like what this deal was all about. Well, I so there's a lot of cr I mean, so much credit goes to AMC mm -hmm. and and their executives there. Um, Susie Fitzgerald and 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 uh, David Madden. Mm -hmm. the, like the, the, when I first read it, I went, "No way, this is going to get made because it's just too hard to sell to put in a box." Yeah, yeah, it's just hard. And they took that man. They took it up and they said, "No, we're going to try and make it work because we just love it. We love the feeling. We love the the vibe of the show." And I thought it was. I feel very lucky to be able to work for a network that will still take a chance on a show like this and stick with a show like this because they. I I know they see the end game, and I've said it before. I really don't think that you will understand the purpose of the mm -hmm. show until you see the last frame of you. the last season. Where you go, oh, fuck, right. <laughs> yeah, totally. And this course, is the network like, that did Breaking Bad. They were the Breaking Bad, Dead. The Walking Dead, Mad Men. Yeah. So they, they, have a, they have a history of doing, of, of breaking shows mm -hmm. that are unconventional and that sort of break, break a mold. Right. And this does break a mold Absolutely. a little bit. It's not something that you could recreate in terms of the storytelling of this show. Because it's not a linear way mm -hmm. of telling a story. It is, everybody has their own path. Yeah. And, and, and everyone's dealing with their own things. But, but our core element of what we're dealing with is our own insecurities, our own anxieties, failures, shortcomings, successes, how you deal with them. It's just about how you go through life and these phases of life that everybody's in. Everybody in the show is in a different phase of their life. And they're all trying to get unstuck from that phase right. and move on to the next one. And Duds just breathed new life into the Lodge, and the Lodge is really in this way of storytelling, in my opinion, the true star of the show. Mm, interesting. Um, Duds just a conduit to come in and have the Lodge work its magic on these people. Um, so yeah, I, it's it's when I, I I wasn't actually pitched the show; I just read it. Oh wow, interesting. Which was which is what was. Like I said the other day, you can get people buy lies all the time, and then they sh you see them on TV, mm -hmm. and you go, "Well, that wasn't what like I thought I was going to get." Right. And this, when you read it, the pilot episode, you I knew exactly what it was, and whether or not that was just by happenstance or coincidence that Jim and I share humor and um, a sense of storytelling that is similar. I immediately was like, "This is what I this is the show I want to do." Yeah. 
This is, I do 100% want to do this show because it has something to say. It has many different things to mm -hmm. say. And it, and it plays on a, a variety of different emotions. So it's not just like one thing or two or three things. It's, it's, the, it's a full range of someone who's a total crazy person <laughs> and, and someone who's, who's very grounded and, and yeah. real. So you've got to play both sides. I thought that was an interesting challenge to take on. It's been really fun. So you've had to tap into a lot of different emotional pockets. What have you learned about yourself as an actor and what has this chapter of your career been like for you? Um, I, I, I've learned a lot and, and uh, one, th one thing I've learned it, through this character specifically is the, be, the specificity of being nonspecific. Mm -hmm. So that usually when you go into something and you learn your lines, it's, you, you're hitting certain beats, you know, and it's, this has to feel fluid. Mm but it's very specific in the fluidity of Dud specifically. Um, that was a challenge that I was ready to take on and have, and have, and have a lot of fun with. Um, but when you watch the show, there's, the, there's a lot of looks and there's a lot of, it's not just a free for all, do right. whatever you want. Right. We, don't, we don't improv a ton. Hmm. It's very, the, the words are the words. I'll add in a couple ums and there's sure, and this it's, it's and this. mainly the script. Mainly it's the script, mainly it's the story because it is a, we're telling a, we, we are telling a specific story. Um, and, and in this part of my career, uh, what's, what's great about TV and what's great about this character specifically, I use the word specifically 14 times, we'll use it again. <laughs> you just keep going <laughs> yeah. Is that, uh, you get a lot of at bats mm -hmm. acting. And acting is like a muscle, like anything else, and yeah, so you, you have work to it. work it and yeah. do it and do it and do it. And this provides a lot of a lot of room to play in different areas. So in, in, a, in a dramatic scene, and then later on in the day, you'll be doing something where you know you're you're climbing through holes trying to find people in <laughs> egg rooms. You know, it's like crazy. So yeah, all different types of stuff. All different types of stuff. And and there's suspense in a way. You know, there's things that are designed to be sus suspenseful even though, you know, it might not end up being the, the, right. the, 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 the end result that, that you were thinking For that moment there, of. there's some suspense. Yeah, so there's things you have to play in order to get those things across. And, and so I feel like I've gotten a lot of practice at, um, at that kind of thing, which is, you don't really get in movies. You do a movie right. for two or three months. If you're not the star of the movie, you're in it for like three weeks. Mm. So you're really only getting to act for three weeks when you're in a show like this. For me, I'm, I'm acting every day. And it's nice to have that runway to work through some stuff. Totally, and, you, and, you, and, and for this show, I get to work with six, you know, f f uh, five other actors who are unbelievable. And so every day you go to work and they're bringing whatever they're bringing to, you get to work, whoever you're working with, you're working with someone that's great. Mm -hmm. You're never working with with a dad. <laughs> <laughs> no pun no intended. intended. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So you mentioned getting unstuck from things, yeah. and I want to talk about identity with you because I feel like identity is part of this, and e even with your own life, it's like, you know, your parents and that upbringing, being a hockey player, that situation, becoming an actor. Identity, it feels like, has been a big thing for you. So, how have you worked through the different layers of identity throughout your life? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, how have I worked through the, uh, the layers of identity? It started for me when I was very young because I was a, I was a pretty aware kid. I can remember being four and five years old and being aware of what was going on around me and my parents and just what was how people reacted to them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't li it didn't make me feel good. Yeah. You know, it's, it, just it's an a odd, weird odd thing. thing. Yeah. Um, I, I understood it, but I, I didn't. I didn't like it. It's not a comfortable thing. Yeah. So when I found hockey, it was something that was very difficult to do. This is me looking back on it. Like I don't think I obviously understood it at the time. Right. But, but with some time now, you can with some time, I yeah. think I'm looking back on it correctly. Um, it was very difficult to do. You can't just step out on the on the field and throw a ball or run or whatever. You got to be skilled. You got to be skilled, so it takes practice. So whenever, if you got good at that thing, that meant that you ha there's no way around it. You had to put a lot of time into it, and people respect that. So that was that was my first identity shift. 
from being different than my parents. And how old were you at that point when you started playing hockey? Uh, f f five. Oh wow! Four or five so years early. old. I can't believe how self-aware you were, even just to recognize. I remember my first. Now. I remember my first. My first real, true, honest memory is getting on the ice rink in Toronto with uh, my dad, and we would. I would skate from bench to bench. Oh wow! And this outdoor ice rink. He just took me to kill time, and I'd skate from bench to bench. I'd sit down. And I'd watch all the people, and I'd skate from, and I'd like basically walk to the next bench. <laughs> and I had these double bladed skates, and my dad went up to the guy and he said, How much for these skates? And he said, They're not for sale. And he said, Well, how much should I leave you if I steal them? <laughs> <laughs> so he like left him 20 bucks and put me in a league when I got home. And I just, I loved it. I loved that the, 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 there was a team aspect to this, to that sport that was diff unlike any other one. It's very, it's probably the most team oriented yeah, yeah. sport that I can imagine because you're all involved all the time. It's not a set play where you're going to one guy or going to two or three guys. Everybody's involved and you're only on the ice for 45 seconds. Right. And then you're on. It's a very, very, very heavy team sport. I, I really liked that. I liked being part of a team. Um, and when I started playing goalie, I could put a mask on. Mm. No one could see my face. Uh, there was no subjective judgment at me. If I played well, I, I really knew that people, but someone was saying good job to me. Like I, it gave me value, you know, I really knew it. Uh, if I didn't play well, I really knew that I didn't play well <laughs> and, 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 and lost. So over time, when, when I got to be about 12 or 13, when you get to be a draft age for this place called the w, WHL, a league called the WHL, it, became to, it began to matter. I was on a team that won the World Championships in hockey, which was like sort, sort of like the Little League World Series mm -hmm. of Baseball. Yeah. We won that. Um, I wasn't the main starting goalie, played a game, but it was like just being a part of that team was... It's a huge deal. A huge deal. Yeah. And, and then I moved on, played junior hockey in Canada, and that was a big step for me, moving from L.A. to junior hockey. That, that was a big... I moved so to Vancouver. So you were a teenager at this point. I was 15. Wow. Moved away from home. Uh, moved to Vancouver, lived there for four year, three or four years, played junior hockey there. That was a that was my growth period. Yeah, um, that was where it was make it or break it. Who are you going to be in your life? Mm. And and you're really going to make a name for yourself as something. That was very important to me. Sure. And and I did, and I ended up playing college hockey. Went to go play professional hockey in Europe, and it just sort of that gave me an identity. And it got to a point where now. I was running myself into a brick wall, mm. realizing, well, you don't you can't just keep doing this, and getting injured, and getting right. concussions, and getting you know hurting yourself, just to keep an identity. That's stupid. So that when I finally got injured for the last time, I didn't go have the surgery that I was supposed to have, to sit out the next year, then to play the next year. I would have been 26 years old yeah. in some weird country, and it was like <laughs> not worth it anymore. You're like, I'm good. Yeah. I got what I needed out of it. Yeah. And so the transition from hockey as as a hockey player the identity of being a hockey player to being in the film industry was easier for me then because i knew how to do things on my own terms and you had done your own thing I'd done my own thing yeah. i didn't need to prove to anybody that i was my own person or anything mm -hmm. like that uh everybody was going to have their preconceived notions but yeah. i dealt with it on a very microscopic level where they all thought i was going to be one very specific thing and had to work my way out of it in a really tiresome way. It was always really tiresome. Just put yeah. your head down, work, don't talk. You can't, you can't have fun like the other guys have fun at the beginning because you have to prove that you're not a douche. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's, there's pressure with that too because sure, yeah, you have all these other expectations on you where the guy next to you or the woman next to you doesn't, doesn't have that same stuff. No, they didn't have the same, they didn't have the same microscope that I had. But again, I said this before too. Part of that was also realizing and learning, like you're you're privileged guy, you're a privileged guy. Sure. Your parents were able to put you in this sport. This is an expensive sport. Pay for coaches. Mm -hmm. um, that that's that's part of everything. So the idea that you would then look to somebody else and say, "Well, I, it's, it's been difficult for me," right. and it's like, "Well." Nobody gives a fuck about right. what your struggle is, dude. Right. Your struggle is important to you. Yeah. It look has outside to be. yourself. Yeah. But but look outside yourself. It's not. N nobody else cares what your struggle is. Doesn't mean your struggle is not important sure. to you. It is. But it's not important to the person who's having you know a worse who has it way worse in in other areas. So. Um, 
that was an important lesson to learn as well as like nobody gives a fuck what mm -hmm. your problem is, yeah. even though it's your problem. Right. There's much worse stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. And it really is just like get over yourself. Too. Get it. Get yeah. over it and just go be better. Or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Figure it out. Just do the work. Right. Just do the work. Work hard. And, and I yeah. feel like you, as a result of going to play hockey, like you just you grew up quick. I mean, you're 15, 16, 17, living in Vancouver. Like, yeah. You gotta make it for yourself. So. What, yeah. did, what did those days look like for you? The, the, when the, my parents moved when I was 15, 16, and some of 17. Because mm -hmm. um, it was like I could barely drive yet. You right. know? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but then after that, I would bill it with families. Mm -hmm. So when I moved, I went to Chicago, Toronto, um, uh, Colorado. We went to, we, I went to a bunch of different places. And I would bill it with a family, gotcha. so you'd you'd live in in their house. You so know? it was like pre Airbnb, basically. No, oh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> well, the, yes, pre Airbnb, but like they, the families would get paid like three hundred bucks a, a month or something for your food. Right. To, and that's kind of how like minor league systems work. With yeah. Baseball with hockey. Same so, thing. Yeah. 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 The, you get you get you know, and you develop a relationship with your yeah, fam yeah. with the families. Some of them were fucking insane, <laughs> and then some of them were the best what, people. What you've were ever some of the craziest families you dealt with? <laughs> They probably won't watch this, but there was one family that like uh, had a kid who was like really out there. I don't even want to say it because it's like it's like it's like it's. I got you. I'll it tell was, you afterwards. Sure, but it was just a messed it up. Was, situation. It was a messed up situation um, and funny sure. to me. But at the time, it was like I got to get out of this, this fucking good. house. Yeah. This is not a good. <laughs> this is not good. The other one was, um, you know, you had to walk to get to my bedroom, which was in the basement mm -hmm. in Toronto, you had to walk down the stairs through uh, someone else's bedroom oh, no. and through a bath and, and through another bathroom yeah. to get to, no, sorry, through someone else's bedroom, through my bedroom to get to the bathroom. Oh, man. So it was like sharing a, be a bathroom. Yeah, that, it was awkward. like really, but, but then we became really good friends. Mm. Well, that's good that that worked out. And yeah, and so it worked out well, but it was still like, you know, that's where you're living. That's your that's your that's your bedroom and it wasn't so bad, but um and then I had, and then and then oh, <laughs> there's actually a funny story where I I in Chicago, um I was living with a family and uh, they were nice enough they were all right, but they were kind of they kind of they they they, they bugged me a little bit. Mm. Uh they were kind of rich people who like didn't have a great sense of the world. The world, yeah. Um, didn't have a great experience with them. Nice enough people. I just didn't. They're genuine. I didn't feel that they were genuine. Mm. Put it that way. And uh, I went and got a. I went and got a uh, <laughs> bed from a, a desk from IKEA. Okay. And I was putting it together, and it was like I flipped the desk over, and it's on the ground in my bedroom, and I'm like screwing it in with a with a hand screwdriver and it's like really it's only four screws but it's like I'm like God, fuck, this is really hard and it's took me like 45 minutes to screw four screws and I'm like this is not but I know it's right I know this is the right screw and I know this is the right <laughs> thing okay and my palms are like bleeding oh my god and I finally get I'm like oh god okay I got it done now it's time to flip the table over and like work on the legs and so I go down and I'm like <gasps> like <gasps> and I realize I'd screwed all the four screws into the floorboards. Um, and I, I, I was like, eh, I like, put the rug over it and was like, okay, flip it over and do it the right way. <laughs> but it was, it was stuff like that. That, that's, that was the stuff that made the experiences like really fun yeah, in yeah. hindsight. Um, sorry, I don't know why. That was just a weird thing that no, came, you know, came out. I haven't thought about that in a yeah. long time. That's really um, interesting. But then, went, but then I went to Germany and Holland and played professional mm -hmm. hockey with Lived with a heroin addict in wow. in Where Holland, was that? Holland? In a place called Groningen, which Groningen. Um, this guy Harm de Guikema, he was a great guy, but clearly had some stuff. Going yeah, on. I told the story on on Dan Patrick, which mm -hmm. I'll, it's too long of a story, but um, yeah, you've gone into your whole Meyer League crazy. Yeah, 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 I've gone. That, that's a story for another time, but it, <laughs> but he he was crazy. He'd play Nirvana at like three a.m. Oh with his bongo drums on game nights, and I'd be like, oh, fucking stop. <laughs> right? Come on, man. Yes, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of that, yeah, which was experiences that I'd never changed, you know, for the world. Part of your story. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you got to play a hockey player in a movie, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goon, Goon was like, uh, that was a really fun experience. Goon was hilarious. It was funny. Yeah. It was great. I, and Jay Barishal, mm -hmm. who directed it, was awesome. He's a great guy. Um, 
I loved working on that on that movie. All those guys are really awesome, awesome people. I had such a fun time being in Toronto. We were we were playing we were shooting at a rink that I'd played at in Barrie, oh, wow. which was weird. And some of the other guys on the other team, like the special mm -hmm. special uh, services guys or whatever, um, actors that I'd played against some of them. Oh wow! But before, That's you know, funny. yeah, it was kind of funny. So that was that was a that was a really cool experience for me. Yeah, and you play kind of a jerk of a hockey player. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was a goalie, so I did I, that was I was playing out, which was really fun to do the oh, practices. Yeah, because you know, you've like been a, sitting in net and finally yeah. get to show off some of the moves. Uh, yeah, or try. Or try. <laughs> yeah, but but some of it came out really good. I've watched the movie back uh, once, and I was like, all right, like it looked like a hockey. Oh, you guys player. pulled it off. You totally did. Yeah, but it was it was a bad. I, I should have done. It was so stupid because I was like, I can do. I don't like my double doesn't need to. Right. You know, for me, I I, I can, yeah, I can do most it. of it. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times the doubles would be working in the morning, mm -hmm. and then the actors work in the afternoon. The doubles do everything that the actors do, so they can cut in between. Right. And then, but I'd be like, yeah, I can do. This. I can like just like, let me do it. Like you'll be able to shoot me all the time. Right. And so I'd be in my skates for like 12 hours a day sometimes and realize like this is a fucking horrible <laughs> idea. And my, 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 my feet are yeah. all blistered and bleeding and like by the end should, of it. Probably should use the double. Like that was, yeah, it was like a really stupid thing <laughs> to do that, but and it was fun. Well, there have been some good hockey movies over the years. Yeah. I mean, like the Mighty Ducks movies were. Mighty Ducks movies fun. were fine. I mean. You're not, you're not, uh, not a huge fan? It's, it's, it, they're. They were the first one's great. Yeah, the first one I loved. The, I loved the first Mighty Ducks. I was just young, or whatever. But it was like, pure and organic. Yeah, and you then, weren't digging the storylines going into two and three. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. <laughs> uh, I'm it's good for. I'm happy that a hockey movie was sure. made, but it was like slap shot and young blood and those are the movies right those, yeah. yeah those are the those well, are the ones. goon well, one right yeah goon was one. also goon two is more of kind of like a fun crazy ride sure. goon one was like a sort of interesting indie film yeah. that um, Sean William Scott was like we were like oh my god he's, I mean, he's so good <laughs> and he is and he is so good um, and it was like really kind of a surprise mm. that was that was pretty cool and the fighting in it was really good too yeah it's all when you have some good fighting in a movie a sports movie like that it's yeah. always nice yeah <laughs> it works yeah, yeah definitely how about 22 Jump Street that was uh, that was like fun too fun experience. that was fun because it was my first time it was a big movie. Yeah. There's big movie stars in it. Sure. They were super, super sweet people. They were, gr they're great actors, um, but they were so supportive of me, just being there. Um, you know, when, when they didn't have to be. Um, they, they were just really like Channing's like one of the nicest person people. He'll, he, he's such a nice guy. And and Jonah too. Like there's Jonah's the, one of the sweetest people you, you'll meet. Uh, he, he's they're just really good people. I don't know yeah. how to keep saying it, but they are. No, but it's important when you're spending that much time. <clears> yeah. Day, you know? And 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 on the flip side of it, also really super smart and assertive. So it wasn't just like you know just like a funny. They were making a movie. They were there to make a movie and make a good one mm -hmm. that was going to make money. Totally. Yeah. And. And Chris and Phil, Chris Miller and Phil mm -hmm. Lord, who just won an Academy Award, yeah, yeah, um, directed it. And they gave you so much lead, like they hired you because they you, they felt that you were the right person for the job. So they gave you a lot of um, leeway to be who who you were, who you thought the character would be in that moment, and yeah, you could play with it and play with it, yeah. and the sense of play on on their sets, and I'm sure it's probably the same now. The whatever live action thing they're doing next um, there's a, it's a lot of fun like they'll yell something out of the back of the back from behind video village and they'll yell something at you where it's like hey okay all right say this talk about his shorts or whatever and it so it creates a really f super fun environment to yeah. to play in that was um, that was cool because again it was like you it was a you I got to find myself a little mm -hmm. bit uh, I look back on it and I you know, I was pretty happy about it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. So I mentioned that one. Who are some other people you've worked with along the way that's been a great experience? Directors, actors, you know, that really stick out years later. Um, I've been really lucky and I've gotten to work with a lot of great people. Uh, Richard Linklater mm. on Everybody Wants Some. That experience was like uh, movie camp. 
Yeah. He'd show us a couple f different films, and we'd talk about them afterwards. Like what? What did he show you guys? Uh, he, we, we saw, we, he showed us Breaking Away. Hmm. Um, he, he, we watched a documentary on Augie Garrido, who's a Texas baseball, yeah, yeah. baseball coach, um, and a few other movies. Um, but th he would, we'd watch them, and then he'd, we'd kind of talk about them afterwards, and... It was like I realized like while we were sitting in his theater, I was going like, oh my god, this is like film school. Mm. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and and then the way he would work and show trust in you that he had felt like you maybe had earned a little bit of like you know of his trust. Right. Uh, we stayed in a camp, a bunkhouse on his ranch for oh, three, wow. for three weeks while we rehearsed and we would go swimming and then he'd call you into the room and say, hey, let's talk about that scene and then he'd talk about it with him and he'd be writing on his computer while you were talking and then he'd say then he'd say well what about this and he'd write a whole th thing and the wow. next day it would be in the script that's and crazy you'd say it and then maybe the next day it wouldn't be in the script mm -hmm. you know because it was like it didn't work out quite like we planned it um, but some of the speeches that I had it was it was a it was really fun to go in a room and be guided be directed by someone, someone like that, that yeah. like it's, he was he was guiding you. He was there was he was helping you along the way, and he'd never say that's no, it's a bad idea. He'd only he'd only go yeah yeah keep working on that one, <laughs> see where that goes. Right, he's not shooting it down. No, he's telling you tinker with it here. And it was really that was a I mean just that whole experience was uh, uh, that will never happen again. Hmm. Um, that was. Probably the most special experience I've I've ever I've ever had. Just be by the way of how it was going and who was there and and uh, the time in my life that it was. Um, another another person I just worked with, Joe Wright. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get, you know I was there for like two weeks or three weeks, so it wasn't like a ton of time, but I felt like it was very um, concentrated in a way that taught me a lot about acting um, that I hadn't really. Th Done before, um, Amy Adams, which are, which this is a movie that'll be coming out later mm -hmm. in the year. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever worked with an actor or actress who quite listens as like she, mm. she does. Because uh, it's like she's like li she's really listening to you. <laughs> it's not. You it's know, refreshing, right? Yeah, she's not waiting for her line and then you know it's, it's just looking at you, waiting for her to say her line. She's really listening, which is like a. An obvious thing you, you'd think, but but sometimes clapper goes and people just get they're in their own world. They're in, they're yeah. in their own world. Um, uh, I got to work with uh, uh, this guy uh, Jim Mickle, who's done a lot of movies, uh, horror, horror and genre films. That, that's he's, he's be more much more than that, but he working with him was. Fantastic, um, and then I don't know. There's a Dan Trachtenberg and mm -hmm. Charlie Brooker on on Black Mirror. Yeah, yeah. Was, that, that show is wild. Yeah, that show is, that really makes you think about the world. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really. That was a great experience. That was a great filmmaking experience because mm -hmm. I was really involved in how we were. Dan needed to make a thing out of something, mm -hmm. and then I could I could uh, give an idea to him by moving my, you know, m moving my attention somewhere else yeah, yeah. in the scene so that he could get the the shot that he needed or whatever that was. It, I was, it was fun to be a part of that experience because most, most of it was on my own and dealing with things that weren't there because there's CGI right. spiders and shit. <laughs> so it was cool to be able to, like, there was a part where I was talking, I'd already been scared by a spider and I was talking to Dan and I was like, well, I know nothing can hurt me. Wouldn't I not? Why, why would I be scared of another spider? Yeah. He's like, well, no, it's like a big spider. I'm like, well, yeah, it's a big spider. So what? He's like, no, it's like big. And he's like, show him a picture of the spider. And, and the guys came with their laptop and like, this is what the spider looks like. And it's coming around the corner and it's like 14 feet oh long. And I'm like, gosh. oh, okay. Yeah, like, like, now I get it. Now, okay. yeah. Yeah. We freaked out totally. We scared of that spider. Um, yeah, that, that, uh, Oh, man, I, I, I've had a, I've been very yeah, lucky. You've had I've some had, great experiences. I've had a, I've had a lot, and you know, I hope to have many good more. stuff to <laughs> still come. Right? Yeah. You're doing the thing with Ethan Hawke coming up next year, right? Uh, yes, Good Lord Bird. I just play a small 
part in that. Um, Jeb Stewart, who is a Confederate um, lieutenant. Um, I'm sort of a continuing character mm -hmm. throughout. You'll just see me, see a little bit, a little bit of me. Um, but it's cool. It's the first kind of real period piece that mm -hmm. I've gotten to be able to do. Um, and it's, I, I, that, just doing one scene of that, and I was just talking to him when I, before I left the other day, just doing one scene of that with him was one of the cool, one of, one of my favorite things I've ever done. Wow. Um, just because of the scenario and what it is, it's the, it's, it's the pre-Civil War, but you're dealing with um, themes that I, I get you know, considered important. Sure. Um, so you want to do, you know, you want to do justice do to right. the story. You don't, you know, there's not, it feels like I want to, I want to, I want to nail it, you know. And, and when we did it together, like, he's the, Ethan's the best. He, he's, talk about an artist mm -hmm. who, who has fun with his art. I mean, that's the, that's a dude who, at least I look at and go, you're doing it totally right. And yeah, that, that's the way you should do it, right? Yeah, yeah you're doing it, to, you're doing it, you've done it, to, like, what a great, amazing career and has kept pushing himself to do more, um, and when you're on set with him, like the energy that he has is so positive and so inclusive, mm. uh, but not in a way that's like bullshitty. Right, it's you genuine. Know? It's really genuine yeah. because that's the that's the best way that he's going to get the best out of everybody. Um, I've been really lucky. I've not worked with many people who who I didn't were were. Toxic or mm. not very, you know, like like that. Right, because I'm I imagine those sets really suck. Ah oh, man, they're just such a bummer too. It's especially bummer. if you're looking forward to working with that person and they kind of are a dud. Yeah, know? yeah I know. Like, three 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 months of that. You, yeah, that that eats at you. Yeah, it does because because you're really in the world. Right, and then and then you have to kind of like, if it's like that, you kind of have to get you know separate yourself from everything and just go home and it's just a job right. and you're like, well, that's not that you know. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather it. I'd rather it be. Rather be something a little different. Be, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, got lucky. You've had a good batting average, so. Far. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, hopefully I can keep it, keep it going. But who knows? So many people. People just gotta keep giving me jobs. Hey, you know, <laughs> you've shown the versatility of all the different things you've done. Yeah. You know? And especially like you said, you could do period pieces. There's all these different platforms to do stuff on now. So. Yeah, it's true. There are a lot of different places to exhibit your. Yourself and sometimes like this, it's it's going after and getting it, even if somebody's not initially. Paying that's it, true. You know? that's that's the, that that's a big part of it too, which I, it's sort of a hard thing to do as an actor because you can only really, you're only gonna get stuff, when people see you as something. You're, right. you, know, you can't. It's like hard to like fight for a role. It is. Yeah, and, it, and it's hard to break yeah. the mold of what people may think about you. Yeah. But you keep showing them different things, and it's like just check, check the tape. And yeah. just yeah, yeah, right. And so when, and when you go and the and the best piece of advice advice I ever got, excuse me, was probably, um, if you're gonna do a movie or you get in anything like whatever it is, uh, entertainment wise, even a interview for you not for me necessarily but sure. for someone like you every time you go to work and you and you do a movie or a television show or do an interview that is going to be there forever It'll, it's never going away yeah for the most part and it's going to be there forever and so do the best that you can like be prepared go go to work do the job it's not like if you have a bad day it's not exactly like, I can just start it back up tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It does fucking matter. Yeah, there's because always somebody watching. A bad day yep. could have been like, you know, one of the better scenes in the movie, and now it doesn't have the same punch, mm. and it's not really that good. It's okay, but it's not really good, which it could have been really good if I just was on my shit. And so that's a big one for me, where I'm like, if I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do it, it's going to be the best that I can do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. Ninety-two percent. It's going to be a hundred. It has to be. Even if a hundred, maybe there's gonna be days where you're not on it as much. Right, you're but gonna like, give it off. Yeah. I'm you're giving it my all. I'm giving. I'm. I've learned my lines. I'm really trying my best to give you to give the director what what they need. Um, so yeah, that that 
that's something that I think I've carried with me for the past nine or ten years. Good deal. Yeah. Wyatt, thanks cool. so much, man. Nice to meet really you. Appreciate it. Check this guy out on AMC. That's Wyatt. I'm DJ. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.